Hey everyone, Monica Bodierski here, artist and author. I am here to share with you some of the tools I designed for divination, tools that I hope will help you on a journey of connecting the spirit realm with the everyday realm. Today I want to talk to you about a four card spread, which is about blockage and resolution or advice moving forward. I've used this spread quite a bit when I'm stuck, which again, maybe fairly frequently being a creative type and someone who's expected to come up with ideas and hit deadlines, that can be kind of stressful. I guess most of us have to come up with ideas and hit deadlines. So let's take a look at this spread. It is offering what I would consider stability. The reason I'm using four cards is because the number four, it's a square. While it is offering stability, it can also make us feel stuck and completely immobilized. I've talked about procrastination before, and it is difficult for all those reasons discussed. You know, fear of not knowing how to tackle something. Where do we even begin? What does that look like? How do we put it in tangible terms? Where do we start our research? And then we have deadlines to add pressure to that, and then it's like, okay, that wasn't enough time when I had enough time. Now I can't do it. We have these self-limiting thoughts. We start to panic. We get anxiety and know that we want to be perfect. We all want to deliver something that is excellent. So those things can be very, well, fraught with all sorts of, of nervous tension and we just end up kind of saying, you know, my brain is folding here. I'm going to have a three day nap and think about it later. So I designed this um, quick spread to share with you. So for the upcoming week, this is what uh, we're doing. We're looking at what is limiting you and I and anyone watching this video. What is it we need to tackle? What are the things that are actually blocking our progress to move forward? This is a very transition time of year. Yes, we're coming to the ending. We're just about to start something new. And yet it's that weird limbo vibe for me. You know, you kind of want to rest, but you kind of feel anxious. I don't know. That's just how I'm taking this moment. So the other two cards are all about how to move forward. They're the advice. They're the engine, if you will, to this vehicle. And they're going to say, this is what you actually need to put into practice. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be using the Shadowland Tarot deck. The Shadowland Tarot deck has been shuffled cleverly while we were talking down here. <laughs> and I've pulled four cards. And the two cards on the left side, if you want to try this at home with your own deck, the two cards are... Um, the blockage. And the first card I have here is the death card. Yeah, the death card is not something very pleasant. I have to admit um, it's nothing we want to look at because, well, it's the major arcana card and it kind of says it's a big deal. But it's, again, about self-limiting thoughts and getting rid of all of the things that no longer serve our highest good really not. Old patterns and behaviors so that we can move forward and give birth to new projects and ideas. We all know that we can't buy more stuff until we eject the clutter, right? Um, yet sometimes we just stay stuck because we don't even recognize them as unhealthy or patterns or worse, we feel totally helpless. We're kind of passive observers in our old our old habits and our old ways and just say, well, that's just how I am. And we kind of feel completely demoralized and give up. This card says, don't, don't feel that way. Sometimes it takes very little change, believe it or not, to create a whole new space for things to come in. Okay. When you find yourself repeating certain patterns, I think the first step here in my case would be that I need to recognize them. If I find myself saying the same things over and over, why is that? Why do I think, and we all know this, that repeat, repeating the same things is going to get a different result? 
right? And yet we do it again because it's, it's almost, that's just how we're wired. Uh, we just keep doing that. So stop for a moment, observe your behavior. I will. I'm going to eject those things that I think really aren't serving my highest good. When I need to sit down and take a break, do I really? <laughs> or is that just a habit? Is that a distraction when I know I have a deadline and I should be over behind me at that desk drawing something? You know, we're the only ones who really know that. And it gets complex when people are telling us what to do because so easy to buck supposed authority and challenge instead of looking inside and taking accountability for who we are. So I'm going to look in the mirror this week and say, you know, it's that time. Let's take a deep look at some of those habits. Out they go. Okay. Or at least recognize them, which is the first step. The next card for what to get rid of, what to address here is the thought of winners and losers. That is what, in essence, the Five of Swords means. It is referring to winners and losers. That's all there is to life, right? Black and white. This crow has all the corn and these others don't. And end of story. What well, really is it? <laughs> Wait a minute, hang on. Is it really black and white? We need to kind of look at where we simplify things or reduce things to such an extent that we're not looking at things as nuanced as they could be. I understand completely that you could write a narrative about this card in a thousand different ways. And that is truly when we might just shut down and say, mm -mm, cannot handle that too much which is why we come down to black and white and a binary. You're right or you're wrong. It's black or it's white. Yes or no. It doesn't need to be reduced to such simplistic terms that you're cutting out a lot of possibility in your life. Try, and I will, to look at some of the nuances in that discussion. You know, this crow could share some of that corn this crow maybe isn't hoarding all the corn at all, but gathering it for someone else. I don't know. Let's maybe not look at it in terms of winning and losing. And don't forget, this is the swords card, the air element, which is all about perception and how we think about things, how we perceive them. Not necessarily reality, but the thoughts that we have. So let's change our perception a little bit. Okay, so... Get rid of old habits, change our perception, and let's look at these two cards to help us with that. So what do we got here? We have Eight of Pentacles. We have this wonderful sugar skull, painting sugar skulls, which uh, clearly is indicative of looking at self and working on self here. Yes, but it is pentacles, it is material, it is earth and grounding, and well, the eight is very stable, but it is also two blocks, sort of an achieving stability. And in this case, I would say that I would need to just practice what I'm saying. So actually, again, walk the talk. Not just say, just practice, just practice. I need to go practice. <laughs> I need to draw 50 crappy things if I really want to get better at it and not draw one thing poorly, put it aside and go, oh, I'm no good at this. It means pushing through that. That is what's going along with eradicating those limiting thoughts, right? There's an example right there. And for you all who are not drawing things, it is just about physically creating the thing. Do the thing. Don't think about cleaning up your desk. Do it. Don't think about cleaning up your house. Maybe do it. Don't think about going for a walk. Go for a walk. It is the physical manifestation of what you think you should be doing. So just do it. Wow, I sound like a bad commercial whenever I say that. Okay, for those of you old enough to remember that slogan, oh, they're probably still using it. I'm so out of touch. And the next card and the final card here is the Magician card. I do love the Magician card because it's so filled with possibility. And that's the whole thing. That's to stay positive 
is understand you're still at the beginning of a journey. Every time you start over again, it's a new journey. How is that a bad thing? It's a wonderful thing. It's the number one in the major arcana. And it's filled with promise and potential. And I have a whole table of goods. And I have three legs. And I have all the tools I need. So let's just get to it. I don't need other things. I don't need more time. I don't need a more expensive watercolor set. I need to, hello, <laughs> sit down and do the thing. That's what I actually need. Wants and needs, yeah, they always come into play, darn it. So the magician card is very positive. Let's all get out there and work some magic. Thank you once again for all of your support throughout this year. You know, this deck only came out this last spring. Yes, it came out right about the time that COVID hit, but it came back from the printer just before then. I was so grateful to the publisher for that timing. And you all have been wonderful in supporting this deck and sending me personal emails, which is above and beyond. A lot of people do reviews and, uh, you know, walkthroughs of decks all the time. And yes, I am very grateful to you as well for sharing your thoughts about the deck. But it is something else, you know, it is really special when people send you very personal emails telling you specifically how your art has affected them or why they like what you've done. Uh, it just gives a lot of purpose and meaning when sometimes creating art can be a bit of an isolating practice. So thank you so very much. Once again, have a wonderful, safe week. All the best to you and your families and review those cards, do your own if you want to give it a try, or just follow what these cards have offered for the week. And until next time, leave your comments below, come visit me at the website and see what classes are up for grabs, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.